Mm -hmm. This is acids and bases, and correlates is chapter 8.3 and 8.4 in your textbook. Your key concepts for this video are, what are the properties of acids and bases? How do we measure the strength of an acid or a base? And what are the products of a neutralization reaction? So first off, let's talk about those properties. Now, acids, they react with metals and carbonates. Carbonates are like limestone or coral or seashells and then any kind of metal. So when you see this on your battery, that's because it's reacting with the battery acid. They also taste sour, like lemons, vinegar, tomatoes, all those have a sour taste. Now, they also turn blue litmus paper red. Before we go on, let's talk about what litmus is. Litmus is an indicator. Now, these are things we use to observe the properties. There's lots of different indicators. They're simply compounds that change color when they come into contact with an acid or base. So litmus is one, and it can be in liquid form, or you can put it on paper as red litmus paper or blue litmus paper, or just litmus paper, which is kind of purpley. There's also the universal indicator. This is often called pH paper when you see it um, on a filter. Red cabbage juice, make a puree of that. It'll indicate acids and bases as well. There's phenolphthalein, which can be in liquid or paper form, and methylene blue as well. So all these will change colors with the acid or base. So back to this, turns blue litmus paper red, so acids red. And lastly, they have a pH less than 7. So 0 to 7 is their pH. Let's get to the bases. So bases, they'll feel slippery. So when you wash your hands with soap or if you ever touch bleach, your hands feel all slimy. That's because it's a base. They feel slippery. They also taste very bitter. So if you ever eat baking soda or an antacid, it tastes really bitter and gross. That's a base. They turn red litmus paper blue. So bases turn red litmus blue. And they have a pH greater than 7. So they're on the upper end of this pH scale. So how do we measure the strength of an acid or a base? Now acids will release hydrogen ions when put in water. Really strong acids will release lots of hydrogen ions, so those H plus ions. Weak acids don't release that many. So an indicator that's what you're looking at is an acid is that their chemical formula, most of them will start with a hydrogen because they release those hydrogen ions. In contrast, bases, when they're put in water, release hydroxide ions, which are negative ions of OH. Strong bases release a lot of OH ions, whereas weak bases don't make so many. And an indicator that you're looking at a base as a chemical formula, it'll end in OH. So to measure this, the most common thing is to use a pH scale, and it ranges from 0 to 14. So remember, acids are less than 7, so down here. Bases, or sometimes called alkaline, are greater than 7. And then right on 7, that's what we call neutral, meaning it's not acidic, nor is it basic. So what are the products of a neutralization reaction? First off, you might have heard to like neutralize something generally means to render it harmless or to balance it out. So when we neutralize in acids and bases, it's when an acid mixes with a base. So for example, when we mix baking soda and vinegar together, baking soda is a base, vinegar is an acid, we mix them together and that creates new products. It's a chemical change. And those new products include water and some kind of salt. So a lot of times when I say salt, you think table salt. But in the case of baking soda and vinegar, it creates um, sodium acetate. So salts are not table salt, but just any ionic compound that's formed due to this neutralization reaction. Now you also know that baking soda and vinegar will also produce carbon dioxide. So there's other products as well. But the two main products of a neutralization reaction is water and salt. That's it. Be sure your notes hit all the key concepts and vocabulary, and feel free to try this challenge question.